sometimes, but not not today. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to fix that, Julian. I'm sending you a copy of my best-selling book, Government Zero. More important today than it was in December. Phone number opens up one line, 855-407-282. Let's go to Florida now on WFTL in Fort Lauderdale. Adam, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi. I just wanted to let you know that this is, I think, an attack on free thinking from the current Obama regime. Because if it doesn't align with their point of view, they shoot you down and they have nothing to do with you but to discredit well, well, what are you. You're talking about the doctor fired at the Boston Hospital? It's like no one has a right to an opinion anymore if it doesn't align with their own political agenda. Well, what they found was an email that Dr. Church wrote, which he said evidence proves that the evidence he's going to present is irrefutable. That quote, and I'm quoting now, he said this. He said, behaviors common within the homosexual community are unhealthy and high risk for a host of serious medical consequences, including, he wrote, STDs, HIV and AIDS, anal cancer, hepatitis, parasitic intestinal infections, and psychiatric disorders, his email said. He went on. He said life expectancy is significantly decreased as a result of HIV, AIDS, complications from the other health problems, and, quote, suicide. And so the fact of the matter is that offended an awful lot of people. Wow. And here's the, here's the, here's the real kicker. Are you ready for this? Some members of the hospital staff who had him fired were offended by Dr. Church's remarks, some of which cited Bible verses. And that's when an investigation into this great doctor was conducted. It's because of his church and Bible relationships. The fact of the matter is he's fired and he'll probably never get his job back. He is being defended by a lawyer at the Liberty Council who even says, he himself says church is out of options to get his job back with this hospital, but the ruling does not prevent him from practicing medicine. Well, that's good to know. Now maybe the state of Massachusetts can work on revoking his license for expressing an opinion uh, that doesn't comply with their uh, own. Thank you for the call, my friends. 855-47282 is the phone number that opens up one line. Any topic is fair game. We'll be right back. I believe in the Second Amendment. It's there written on the paper. The paper. It guarantees a right to bear arms. The paper. No matter how many that? times people try to twist my words around, I talk constitutional law. I know a little bit about it. Oh, this. you're a real genius. <laughs> yeah, you know a bit, of, you know I, a bit about it. it. That's true. All right, you, you got the whole story. He knows a bit about constitutional law. That's true. He knows enough to how to get around it. Did you hear his reference? He says, I believe in the Second Amendment. It is there written on the paper. He didn't say in the Constitution. He said on the paper. Like it's a scrap of paper written by some deceased men that has no relevance to the great one. It's unbelievable to me. Meanwhile, the Dow is down more than 250 points amid China economy worries and North Korea bomb claim. That's all. That's the real story that the vacuum created in the power structure of the world by Mr. Obama has enabled China to poke the junkyard dog North Korea into setting off a bit of their fireworks in an underground test to scare us in case we want to retaliate in any way against their economic uh, the rigging of the economic system whether it's reevaluating the yuan which they did two days ago by the way or um, ginning up the stock market by the way the entire Chinese stock market China stock market is rigged it's fake Incidentally, I don't know which stock market isn't fake, but that one is especially fake and shaky. And I don't know how much they can rig it, you know, or rig it up there to make it look like it's still good. But people are going to be bailing out of China in these foreign investment funds and whatnot. I'm glad I'm not in it. I don't have a diamond stock myself. That's why you never hear me touting any stock or pushing any companies. I'm not invested in anything. I'm unlike the liberals who are. Liberals like George Soros, who pretends to be uh, uh, in love with green things and the environment. He drove coal stocks down to near a dollar a share. And then he went in and bought some of the all the coal companies in the United States of America, as many as he could. You don't know anything about that. It shows you what liars the left, the really powerful billionaire left, really are. George Soros drove coal out of America as fast as he could drove Peabody Coal and other stocks 
down to about a dollar a share. And then he swooped in and bought up the companies, let us say, at one cent on the dollar. And now he's in the coal business. The same way Al Gore's father was in the coal business. You don't know that about old Al Gore, do you? But I, I remember these things. Al Gore's father, then Senator Al Gore, may God rest his soul, uh, when he retired from the Senate, went to work for Armand Hammer in the Occidental Petroleum Company, and he made Al Gore Sr. the president of the Occidental Coal Company. You don't know that. Al Gore's entire inheritance was built upon shares in the Occidental Coal Company. And then he pretends to be Mr. Environment, okay? So look, there's a lot of hypocrisy in this country on all levels, on both sides of the aisle. So let's not suddenly put the left on a pedestal and say that they're all uh, driven strictly by an agenda to purify the earth and purify society. It's rubbish. And the whole reason that they, well, it's a long story. I don't want to go into it. Yeah, I've done it for too many years for me to repeat myself. It makes me bored of myself, and I, I can't afford to become <laughs> bored of myself, and I won't do that. So we got the H-bomb. We have not a word from Barack Obama, who had a big, big statement to make yesterday about the Second Amendment. Nothing, not a word. Not a word today. You'd think the leader of the free world would say something to calm the jitters, but apparently he uh, said everything he wanted to say yesterday when he attacked the Second Amendment. After all, he's an expert on the... Uh, on the Constitution. He knows something about it. He knows a bit about it. I'm glad he wants to reduce gun violence. I really am. I really would hope he would reduce hydrogen bomb violence and ISIS violence and the rape of young girls in the Middle East. Not one word from him or any other community about the rape of young girls in the Middle East by Islamic State. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. So my intuitive answer to the uh, Korean situation is I said it's China pulling their string. It's the, the junkyard dog of China. They could stop them. And I just learned uh, to my satisfaction that Trump said almost the same thing this morning on Fox News, which I didn't hear. He said that China should take the lead in tackling North Korea after the nation of North Korea alarmed the world by saying it successfully tested a hydrogen bomb. Trump said on Fox News, China has total control, and China should solve that problem, and if they don't solve the problem, we should make trade very difficult for China. He's basically reading from the same prayer book as I am. It's the prayer book I wrote called Stop the Coming Civil War and the second addendum to it called Government Zero. And I want to talk about that for one minute. I want to read you a paragraph and see what you think about it. I asked this question on page two, and it's as fresh today as it was on the day I wrote it a year ago. Why would any government bring in unvetted Muslim immigrants at a time like this? It would seem that only an insane prince would do this to his country. But Obama is not insane. He's stoned. He's stoned on the orthodoxy of the progressive left. Obama and his supporters are drunk on their ideology. They think that they're going to create a progressive utopia by continuing their attack on all Western values. This is precisely how great civilizations of the past declined and eventually fell. They rejected the values that made them great and degenerated into narcissism and selfishness. They kept on partying until they were too weak to defend themselves. Then the unthinkable happened. They fell. And then I go on to a closer at home. We are similarly paralyzed as this most evil of administrations swings its sledgehammers at our most revered institutions. A climate of fear grips the people as the sneaks in high places spy on us, sell us out to Red China in a secret trade deal, decimate our medical system, eviscerate our military leadership, evaporate our borders, erase our culture and attack religion's basic tenets. Meanwhile, millions of illegal aliens pour over our southern border bringing with them an unwillingness to assimilate into American culture, refusing even to speak English. This is what I call government zero. We are supposed to be a nation where the government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. Yet every poll, every poll, shows this rogue government of sneaks and traitors seems to relish doing the opposite of the will of the people. It is a government of itself, by itself, and for itself, run by lobbyists. In short... Government zero means absolute unchecked government power and zero representation of the people. It does not exist to promote 
conservative or liberal principles. It is not pro-immigration or anti-immigration. It is not capitalist or socialist. It is not religious or atheist. These are all just means to its end. Its end is its own preservation and growth. This is by no means a new concept. Most governments throughout history have exploited those they ruled for the benefit of those who, who control them. Before the birth of the American Republic, government zero was the rule, not the exception. I can go on, but I needed to relay the groundwork for the basic tenets of this program because for the year 2016, as we head into a presidential election, I feel that as the driver of this bus or the pilot of this plane, you ought to know where I come from and where I'm heading. And that's where I come from, and that's where I'm heading. Now it's time for you to speak out on the Savage Nation. Let's go to some of the callers around the country and around the state. K-U-G-N, Jerry, in Eugene, Oregon. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Uh, I agree with what Mr. Trump said. It is China who is going to rein them in. However, I believe that the funding for the North Koreans is coming from Iran. Iran has the disposition to destroy America, and they don't care if they're destroyed, uh, unlike the Chinese who are worried about being destroyed by nuclear weapons. You know, mute. Mad, mutually assured destruction is something the Russians, the Chinese, and the Americans understand. And that is, if there's a nuclear war, everyone loses. And the Iranians could care less if they lose, and so could the Koreans. So that's why. So you're saying the Iranians, who are obsessed with the same insanity as ISIS, which is to want to bring about the destruction of the world so they can usher in their, uh, their insanity, uh, their religious insanity, they actually believe we need the world to be blown up for this, this, this body to arrive, whatever the body is, they, it's the equivalent of the return of the, of, of, um, the Messiah to them. And it can only happen after the world blows up. That's what you're referring to, correct? Correct. And if they use, uh, North Korea as their surrogate to accomplish it, then, you know, they are accomplishing, you know, their. And why, why is the United States under Barack Obama backing Iran in the, in the showdown with Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia has been our ally for years, even though it's been quite a strange relationship, given that almost all the hijackers on 9-11-2001 were from Saudi Arabia, given that the Wahhabi sect of Islam comes out of the Arabian desert. Nevertheless, Saudi Arabia has sort of been our ally in a fight against ISIS in particular. Why is Obama not backing Saudi Arabia but backing Iran in this showdown? The Iranian and, and most of the Muslims have found it almost impossible to deal with the Clinton, I mean, the uh, Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State and the Obama administration. They treat them uh, very poorly, where they're, while the Iranians open the door to the State Department and, and the various folks in the Obama administration. Hillary Clinton was, was not even ever invited back to another Muslim country after her first visit because she was so insulting. But the Iranians were more than happy to talk to our State Department. Uh, and the Obama administration, you know, uh, would love to align himself with the Shias of the world rather than the Sunnis of the world. Well, why is that when the Sunnis are the dominant majority? Uh I I can't answer that, uh, but I do know that he has never uh, been particularly fond of the Sunni countries. Uh, has well, it, you know, I know many people are, are dying to call a show and say Valerie Jarrett, who is of Iranian descent, she's sort of their man in Havana, to use a 1950s Graham Greene uh, analogy. She, many people think that she is the Iranian plant in the White House, who is secretly dictating most of our foreign policy. Would you agree with that? I don't know her. I do know there's more Muslim advisors in the White House than all the previous administrations combined, uh, and that's very telling. Um, well, it may not only be Muslim advisors, but they could be Muslim advisors advising Muslim leaders. There may be, how many stealth Muslims do you think there are in the leadership in this country? I keep reading about rumors, we don't know whether they're wild internet rumors or not, that a good percentage of those in leadership in this country have converted to Islam. Have you read any of that stuff, that conspiracy stuff? No, and conspiracies go only certain uh, uh, so far with me. Uh, because you can come up with conspiracies with almost... See, my position is I don't care if they're Islamic uh, um, in, Orient, in religion. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is what are they 
as Americans, where does their loyalty lie? Their religion doesn't matter to me. It's their loyalty and whether or not they're going to be acting in the best interests of America that matters.